Everybody, welcome back to another episode of IDFS Fantasy Baseball Picks. I'm your host, Mike Ruler31. Sorry this is so late in the day, but I really wanted to get a feel for the weather. Got several uh, potential issues out there, and uh, some lines aren't in. And again, I, I just felt pricing was kind of difficult, so I played around with some lines once I saw uh, some things come out. So uh, help you build. So I won't uh, spend too long on this. I'll just try to blow through these games. It's a smaller slate, so uh, we'll see how many games actually play. We've got a seven-gamer here, and uh, let's just get into it. So the first game is supposed to be Milwaukee and Cincinnati Reds. I don't know if this game is going to play. With all the lines that have already come out, Milwaukee has not released theirs yet. That's usually a telltale sign that something is up. Um, Cincinnati has. It looks like they have 90% chance of rain. Uh you're like nine o'clock tonight, and then it drops down to 80%. So I it's it's a great hitting environment and everything. And the Reds and Milwaukee have put up a lot of runs, so it's a great game to target. Uh, with um Hunter Green has been okay with this game plays. I don't know if I trust the pitchers because there might be another delay. I definitely don't trust Wade Miley and uh, maybe some of the red bats here, but I think you know if you do play them, they'd be very low owned. So and FanDuel, you can take a chance on this because if the game does get um, postponed, they do let you swap it on and DK, it locks it in and you won't be able to be in the first game. Then you're kind of out of luck on those things. So next game, we have uh, Cubs and Padres. No other issues for this one. Uh, Kyle Hendricks has um, can't strike anybody out, so not interested there. Um, and San Diego is uh, the bottom 4K team and, and strikeouts for the year and dylan cease um, i think is probably a top trim on the slate here at uh 10 2 he has a cub team that has hit well recently but i think he's got enough stuff to kind of neutralize him here uh bat wise uh san diego gpp although with all the rain and issues they're probably the safest one to play and then the cubs would just be a leverage stack miami and the yankees Wind blowing in five miles per hour, a little bit of rain risk, but it looks like it's really tailed off and it'll be perfectly fine there. Ryan Weathers not interested in the lefty against this powerful righty Yankees lineup. And Stroman on the other side has looked good this season. Uh, Marlins have, um, even though they've got a low K rate against uh, righties, I think that uh, Stroman's definitely in play here. Um, in if you're paying up. I prefer uh, Cease and Bradford, but Stroman, I think, would be third in line. So looking at the Marlins lineup, if you want to hedge, uh, you know, take the lefties, Areza, Bell, uh, Jazz, Jesus Sanchez is in the lineup there. Um, and uh, Forte, I think, is a good punt catcher at 2-4. Might do absolutely nothing, but he's probably going to be the cheapest catcher on the board, so open some stuff up. And the Yankees, so Volpe is actually leading off here. Uh, Judge and Stanton there, so I like the righties there. Torres batting six. I'd probably skip over Soto and Rizzo in there. If you want to do a wraparound, Trevino and uh, Birdie uh, make it work also. If you wanted to go like eight, nine, one, three, four, um, and skip Torres, uh, I think that's fine also. Or even with Trevino going like nine, one, three, four, six, that only leaves you a space between like um one and three and uh three and five and that should work well three four and six that should work out for you uh baltimore and the red sox another risk of rain here but it looks like it's only gonna be in the teens so <laughs> should be fine if uh the showers like are should be south of the stadium if they do go a little bit more north it could be trouble but i think they'll be fine Paul irving comes over from the a's and uh Hunter Crawford, I, I think both pitchers are in play here. I, I think Irvin's a little bit, a little bit of risk there, but uh, probably the best in the cheap range. And Cutter Crawford, I think, is going to be probably the default SP two, even though you've got a really strong uh, lineup here for Baltimore. So, um, you know, Baltimore, I definitely like in a GPP. The lefties here: Henderson, Santander, O'Hearn. I can do a wraparound too with Holiday. You have to take a choice. You have to make a choice here, unfortunately, because Holiday's minimum price coming up, but he's batting ninth and Gunnar Henderson to both shortstop. So you have to figure out which one uh, you don't want there. But, you know, you, you've got a lot of lefties here with Russian switch hitter, Santander, O'Hearn, Mullins, Krauser has been um, hitting well too. So a uh, lot of options. On the Boston side of it, 
uh, against them. Uh, Tyler O'Neill's probably going to be one of the best plays on the slate, and I'm okay if I t- you take him just as a one-off in your cash lineup. Uh, Duran and, and Devers and Cassis, like you're starting off with three out of four of your batters, a lefty versus lefty. So, and Cole over it, I don't think is a very first splits guy, but you have a uh, 2K Romney Gonzalez there at um, second base, and Pablo Reyes is decent at second shortstop at 2 5 in the middle of the lineup, and then Wong at catcher, and Rafaela is a decent outfielder to do a wraparound there. So, uh, I'm okay mixing in some of the left handed bats. I'd probably skip Duran, I'd probably go more with Cassis or uh, Devers if we can get up to him. Uh, for your Boston stack, but I definitely like the righties as one officer, um, a mini stack there. Mets and Braves. Uh, this one is another questionable one that probably might not play. We don't have the Mets line yet. So, I mean, that's a, it could be another telltale sign where, like some of the other later games, we do have the lines already. But, you know, maybe they're just waiting here. We have Jose Quintana and who's a lefty going against the Braves, not interested there with all the righty power that they have. And then Alan Winans um, with uh, Strider out has come up from triple A, got stretched out uh, during um, spring training. So he should be able to go probably four or five here. Uh, You know, he's 77. He's not like a 4K pitcher. So the Mets can struggle at times, or, you know, they recently they've started hitting a little bit in this series, so it could go either way. Don't really have a read on it, but I think, you know, in the medium range, you can keep um, Winans in the player pool. Mets, uh, bats, I, th- I think, uh, is GPP, definitely. Um, and then Braves, I think if the would be the top stack on the slate, but I think you had the fault of the Yankees with the weather. If, if this game does look like it's going to play, if we do get the Mets line and, and everything, but I don't know how long they're going to play. Like it's fine now, but at eight o'clock, it goes to 50%. And then nine o'clock, 60%. And by 10 o'clock, you're talking like 70, 80% chance of rain. I don't know if this full game gets in. So uh, definitely very risky to play anything from this. Houston and Kansas city should be okay here. Uh, Maybe a sprinkle or something, but nothing to really worry about. Uh, Houston, I believe, is the bullpen game. They have Spencer Aragetti. Uh, looks like pitching. Don't know how long he's going to go. I just have to keep an eye on who comes out with that. But uh, Seth Lugo going for the Royals. Not really interested, even though Houston has not been as powerful as... Um, they have an up paying 8.4 for Seth Lugo, who could probably only get me like 10 points. Uh, definitely be low owned, but um, it, but Houston just has such a low K rate, number three overall this season, even you know with the the record and not um getting hits. Um, definitely the potential's there, so I'm, I'm not messing around playing with that fire. Uh Houston bat wise, uh, I think you know probably my fourth um favorite stack. And the Kansas City bullpen's not uh, bad, but it's not great. And then uh, Kansas City bats against Houston. I mean, it's always hard. I, I think they're in play here for cheap. I think I'd rather go like Oakland or uh, Miami potentially, because usually with um, if it's a bullpen game, they can mix, mix and match so much, and you don't know like how much of like which handedness for the split you're going to get. So. Uh, just be very cautious there. And then A's and Rangers, uh, Striplin and Bradford. Striplin, I, I, I don't think I can cross him by like him. He's probably going to get the same amount as points for Lugo. Maybe I even outscore Lugo and save you like 2.4K. So I think you got to consider him and play for a cheap one. I like Irving better against the Red Sox. Um, and then Corey Bradford, the A's definitely have uh, some uh, K's. Fourth, uh, worst in um, baseball and swinging strike rate there so uh k rate over 25 percent, maybe i think 26 can close to 27 percent. so i think bradford is definitely um in play for them but i do like the ace bats if you can get up to geloff uh jd davis uh just dongs davis against lefties crushes lefties uh langley Lears had three home runs last night i don't think he's going to repeat that but i think that's definitely in play uh toro he was in the houston system and he had some power and speed there and uh just he never quite made it with the team but i think the potential is always there too at two five take a shot for him at, at third base and um 
Arenas, uh, Daryl, uh, third baseman, also um, 2K minimum price. You know, what does he have to do to really make value there? Not much. Um, pump play for probably GPPs. Texas, I like in GPPs also, or you know, as as a as a stack here. Uh, give me the lefties like Seeger, um, Carter, Smith, Walsh, Heim, uh, Traveris. I guess you could throw in there too. I'm fine with Semien and Garcia too. They're great hitters. And Langford, I don't know. He might be the odd man out here against uh, Stripling righty on, on righty. But, uh, you know, the Oakland bullpen isn't uh, – well, actually, it's been a little bit better this year. But still um, – I, I think you could play anybody from this Texas lineup. So uh, just kind of recapping here for what I have. Cease and, and, and Bradford is what I'm looking at for pitchers and Stroman, I think is definitely in play here. Green, I think the game's going to rain out in the mid range. So I said Crawford's the, the safest one here and probably going to be everybody's default SP2. Winans is intriguing for Atlanta, but again, that game might get rained out. And um, I should, probably should have put the blue up on that. So I will do that right now. And uh, you know, same thing for Cook Con, but he's a fade. So Lugo GPP only, Miley not really interested in. Irving, I think you can make a case for and, and Stripling, um, but I think that could be playing with fire. And that interested in whether it's Hendricks, Quintana, or whoever Houston's throwing out there, unless it's somebody that um, – a, a, a regular pitcher that we, we know that I may already consider there. So top stacks, Atlanta, but again, I, I don't see that game playing. It's very risky. So New York, Yankees, love the righties there. Texas, love the lefties there. Houston, um, I think, you know, normal arm play. I'd probably focus on definitely trying to get Tucker and Alvarez in, in your lineup. There, Baltimore and Boston make great GPP plays. As long as San Diego, that's the one where you don't have to worry about whether the Mets are intriguing if that game's plays, but again, it's going to be risky. Kansas City, like them there. Uh, Oakland and Miami for fill-ins, and then leverage plays simply would be Chicago against a really good pitcher in Cincinnati and Milwaukee, which, I, again, I don't think that game plays, but if it does, it'll be very low ownership, but I don't even know if it makes it the full time. So um, a little bit of risk there. So. Let's look at the builds and get you on your way for your day. Uh, Season Crawford, I'm going with there. Uh, if you want to go Bradford in cash, I, I don't – it's for a little bit extra. I'm fine with that. Uh, it has a little bit of better matchup for Ks. Uh, I am going to go Oakland, uh, J.D. Davis, uh, Horace from the Yankees, uh, Volpe, Judge, and Stanton. If you want to uh, try to get um, – as a one-off in there from Boston O'Neill, uh, I'm definitely fine with that too. I, I tried building a Boston New York stack and, uh, you know, in different variations of that, um, you know, taking Torres out, put the 2K guy in and get up to like Devers and, you know, just trying to get some of the righties in there. Um you know, I, I have very different variations of that and the dollar just to see if it hits, but um and that's where I'm, I'm looking to go for cash so it's like fill in with the a's or fill in with boston for gpp bradford and irving and i'm going um straight up uh boss or boston baltimore and against uh probably the chalk sp2 in crawford from boston and then um texas and pretty much sticking to the lefties there and if um, Gunnar Henderson, if if you want to get cute and uh, put Holiday there at two K, that's going to just going to open up uh, so much more for you salary wise, um, to be able to be a, probably a little bit different in your lineup. So we'll see what's going there. So uh, that's what I got for you. A little bit of a difficult slate with weather and and pricing and stuff, but uh, enough hopefully to help you be competitive tonight. So if you have any questions, put them chat below. Hit me up at Megaro three one at X slash Twitter. Um, for more information on side DFS, can, you can get into our um, Discord by going into the description of the video and signing up on the website, and uh, you'll get the complete cores from all of us, all the showdowns, uh, tiers, all that stuff. Um, very inexpensive for the day. 
um for the week it's, and then it's only six dollars play all sports for a day so it's it's not that um expensive there and if these videos help you as always help us back by liking subscribing to our channel if you haven't already and sharing with friends so that's what I got for you. McKinley should be back tomorrow to do the breakdown. Um, and I'll be covering NASCAR this weekend. So stay tuned to the channel for what we've got for you. So thanks for watching. Good luck in your contest. You know how to get a hold of me if you have any questions. I'll see you next time.